brand new EP that's coming out. We've been able to play the new single over the over the last week or so, and a lot of people here in Australia are absolutely falling in love with it. So I want to start off by saying congratulations about that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So, guys, tell us a little bit about the history of the band. A lot of Aussies are, are hearing you guys for the first time, and they probably want to know a little bit about the band. So tell us a little bit about how the band came together in the first place. Sure thing, man. This is Alon. Um, we, we've all been in bands playing in the local scene here for years and uh, all known each other and kind of worked together in certain projects here and there. And then uh, Rob hit me up to do, he's like, hey, let's do this like side metal thing. And I was like, yeah, I've always wanted to. I already, I already have an idea for it. So we pretty much just started writing stuff to text message, like sending it back and forth. And uh, I pretty much wrote this whole EP's mapped out rhythms and riffs like that. And then just kind of hit everyone else up and put it all together. And that's how we got to be a band. And, and everyone was pretty on board right away. Awesome. Yeah. I'm a- we're a bit of like an all-star team because we were all in different bands that played shows together. Yeah, all that's how we all knew each other originally. Yeah. And we just picked all the best people and, and made a new band with it. Pretty much. <laughs> so what were those first few times like when you guys got together to play and jam together? Did that feel pretty special for you all? Yeah, it was really cool to hear it since we did kind of do it in pieces. And also it was during, you know, like pandemic time. So everyone's isolated and like minimal contact and meeting up. So once we finally got like everybody together, uh, it really was like, it was cool to hear, not just like in your head or some recording of it, but to hear it live was, uh, I I was more stoked on it than I thought I would be. Now we had... Um, I think it was 240 days of lockdowns here in Melbourne, Australia, uh, with the quarantine and with COVID and everything. So what was that like starting a band during a pandemic? That must have been pretty difficult to to get together and, and rehearse and things like that. So what was that moment like coming together during a pandemic? Uh, yeah, it, like I was saying, it was cool once we finally could. Most of the time it was hey, let's try and get together one guy, two guys here and there. Uh, and we, you know, we could when we could. And it was just, it, it didn't happen. Like like I said, the whole band didn't play together until, you know, a couple of months ago, really. We didn't even record this thing. I, I wasn't present for anyone else's, you know, recordings. Yeah. Most of us didn't even overlap. That's how, uh, you know. Right. Everybody had to record, like, by themselves with the mask, with the with Steve, that's the, uh, the producer, engineer, and... Uh, yeah. So yeah, it was it was very the lockdowns like, don't stop at the studio door. I'm afraid. Yeah, it was very <laughs> it was very much like doing your own thing for a while. Yeah, but it was fucking glorious to finally get all the whole band in the room together because yeah. we had written all of it, uh, you know, over the phone and over email and stuff, and just to have it finally come together was pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. And what kind of things were inspiring you guys when you were actually? working on the lyrics and working on the music, was there anything there that was really, really inspiring you? I think lyrics. Lyrically, I mean, uh, some some of the songs on the record I I had from, you know, older times. Uh, that was for something like this, this kind of a project. But uh, especially like something like, like Trigger Man, it's like, yeah, it's what we're all going through right now, being locked down and, you know, with a glove up our ass. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of... Yeah, <laughs> gave good fodder for pissed off material, I would say. Yeah, there's plenty to be kind of like pissed off about, honestly. So yeah, even musically, it was it was very like, what's the kind of like angriest thing I can make that's I still think sounds good. And uh, yeah, like I said, plenty plenty of that going around with work, going out socially, family life, whatever. It's all been strained. So. Burning down your kitchen. Yeah, burning yeah. down, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, aside from the fantastic normal life on top of it, it really just, it, it really does provide a lot of, uh, a lot of inspiration for this kind of music. What were the lockdowns like for you guys there? Because like I said, ours lasted for 240 days and we had some pretty strict restrictions for most of that time. We weren't allowed to go any more than five kilometers from our house. We were only allowed to go out to go to a medical appointment or to go to a supermarket what were the lockdowns like there for you guys? That's probably why you guys are not uh, the highest country of, of people with COVID every day like we are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. Ours have been 
not that strict. Not, not, strict. not that strict. Everyone here is mad now that you have to wear a mask sometimes. So, of course, there was, like, the initial madness that happened yeah. when they began. And everyone was hoarding toilet paper. And then it was like, oh, shit, this might be the actual apocalypse. Yeah. You know. Yep. And that good Americans, we all, you know, got our guns. And, and everyone were down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone got mad that you weren't wearing a mask, and everyone else got mad that you were wearing Where's a mask. Where's your mask and your fucking gun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? The second the second I was like, oh, old white people could die from this? Oh, oh geez, geez, we, we better, better fucking do something. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but, man. Uh, yeah, we don't we don't actually know how bad it's it is over there. Yeah, like we don't we're 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 also not getting the full story from any. So fucking surprise, yeah. we're not getting the whole story either. So how bad has it been for you guys now? Is it is it bad for you currently? Look, life is. <laughs> this is where it gets really weird because if you watch TV of a nighttime and you see the riots and you see the um the protests, it feels like it's really bad here. It's actually not. Uh, 90% of the yeah. population are back at work like they would normally be. Um, yeah, we have to wear masks on public transport or if we're in a retail shop or something like that. But most of the people that you see on television now that are angry are the ones who decided that they weren't going to get vaccinated. So they haven't been able to return back to work. So yeah, it, it, it's that mixture of... 90% of the population are living their lives as normal with masks occasionally, and the other 10% are just very, very angry. Yeah, it's that's... the 10% that are going to fucking kill us! That's, yeah. Yeah, that's what everybody sees. The same, same thing here. Most people are pretty cool about most things. And then, 90%. Every now and then there's that one asshole. So. And they're the loudest, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. And what was that like going into the studio one at a time? Did that... Um, did that actually give you more time to work one on one with the producer, or do you prefer being able to all go in together and record together? I think it's good and bad. I mean, I, I, we've all kind of done both of those things. The good part about going in by yourself is you feel a little, even with your close friends, you feel like less pressure. You know, like just what, like one less person looking at you, going, "Hey, you screwed that up." <laughs> um, but uh, but at the same time, like if you, say someone were to do something without the other person there, it's, it could be like, hey, what, what, what was that? Did you rewrite that in there? Or, I don't remember that part. But mostly, it was. I think it was pretty um, comfortable just because the, the Steve, Steve Evans was so cool. Steve, I, Steve did my favorite hate read record of all time, Satisfaction of the Death of Desire. And <laughs> I told him that immediately, but I was, I was terrified going in there. And he, oh yeah, I, I was I was very worried about what he would think, but he he was so great. Yeah, I actually was more worried about what he would think than what you guys would think anyway. So <laughs> I was like, I'll pass that. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> How do you put that behind you as an artist? Because yeah, sometimes we all get starstruck by the producers that we get to work with. How do you put that behind you as an artist when you go in and and, and take their advice, but not kind of get starstruck at the same time? You know, he it's a, a good producer will make should make you feel pretty comfortable. Like just a few good genuine compliments later and I was in, I was in the bag. Like, yeah. he, he made me feel like I was in his house, you know. Right. He he could have hated our stuff, I would never know it. He was, yeah, exactly. he was so Which he is, was complimentary <laughs> and like knew how to like get us to get the job done. Yeah. Awesome. He push and knew, knew when to like when I needed a little hey yeah. Adam boy, you know. But, plus I mean the thing is he is like a music nerd and fan like we are. And so, half the, you know, you take a break and it's like, oh, man, do you hear this? you hear that? you hear that? So it really is just kind of like hanging out with one of your buddies, luckily. I'm sure there's other people out there that are not as cool, but uh, so this time we, we were very lucky. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, guys, of course, the EP is about to come out. But for people out there that want to grab a copy of the EP, where can they grab a copy from? And I also know you guys have got some pretty cool merchandise that you've got available as well. Is that right? Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, all of it can be found on our just our website, which is the band name, authorsoffate.com, just spelled out. Um, we also have a band camp, but most of the other stuff is streaming. So really, really the main place is on the website. That's where we'll have the full store set up. We'll have the merch, we'll have the CDs, and then you would be able to stream it everywhere else that they're streaming. So, But yeah, all, all physical merch from the site. Awesome. Well, guys, we're going to play Trigger Man on our show again right now. So what would you like to say to everybody out there before they not only take a listen to this amazing track, but before they get a chance to go out there and listen to the EP as well? 
thanks for listening. And if you don't like it, I'm I'm really really sorry that you're wrong about this this time. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're all allowed to because I because I hate most stuff and I actually like this. Already so. forgiven. Yeah, but but we'll totally you give you a pass to love this. And, and feel free to tell us that we suck. <laughs> 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 we're not really yeah, sure actually, if anyone anything. could tell us what genre we are, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be cool. I think I think you guys have created a genre. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't I don't mind. Yeah, it's, I think that's the, the age old like metal joke. Like, oh, what are you? Oh, we're uh, we're oh, we're a little this, a little that. Uh, we're like power slop. We're authors of genres. Yeah, we're authors of genres. genres to paint. Yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> awesome. Well, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure, and hopefully one day we get to see you guys touring here in Australia. Yeah, 